Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is bread. B-R-E-A-D. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! Hey, that's me, Groucho Marx, the Queen of the May. Thank you. Well, here I am again with $1,500 for one of our couples. George Fenneman, who's first? We invited some girl gas station attendants and some hot rod drivers to the program. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Dorothy Donata and Don Stedman. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll split $100 in cash between you. It's a common word, something you see every day. A hot rod driver and a girl service, uh, service attendant, eh? Dorothy uh, Donata? I presume you're the girl service attendant? Eh? Yes, huh? I am, sir. I thought so. You're wearing pumps, that's why. <laughs> Where are you from, uh, Dorothy? Oh, I'm from the beer and pretzel capital of the world, Reading, Pennsylvania. Oh. <laughs> There's a drunk in the first row, huh? <laughs> And, uh, Don, uh, Stedman, you're the hot rod driver. Where, where, where are you from? Hot Springs? No, sir, I'm from, uh, the Sooner State, Oklahoma. <laughs> you both look like fairly new models, uh, uh, Don, uh, how old are you? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. And, and what's your age, Dorothy? Twenty-two. Well, you still got the original paint job, huh? <laughs> are you married, Dorothy? No, I'm not. Why not? Oh, I still have time yet. So have I. Shall we dance? <laughs> Why aren't you married, Don? Well, I still got a little ways to go. Well, if you're driving a hot rod, it won't be long before you'll get there. <laughs> How do you go about building one of your highway rockets? Well, uh, uh, well, you rebuild the front end, put in new kingpins and, uh, New shocks all the way around, and uh, then you have to change the gears in your differential. You've got to get your manifold. Some of them are running four pots this year. No, what? Some of them are running four pots now. Well, I've been half potted, but I didn't know. What, what, what is, is what is a pot anyhow? It's a carburetor. Uh, uh, why don't you call it a carburetor? Well, that's just like building a stock car. I see. That would you're too snobbish to call it. That. <laughs> well, what else? Uh, what else do they oh, do? Well, there was one fellow that put two front ends, one on the front, one on the back. <laughs> well, what, what is the object of that? That sounds. Uh... Well, you'll have to admit it's different. <laughs> more interested in freaks than you are in locomotion. Uh, Dorothy, uh, how about some service? You've been standing there all this time and you haven't even wiped my windshield. <laughs> Tell me, what do you think of hot rodders? Oh, I think they're swifty. You think they're what? Swifty. <laughs> Did you know you were swifty? Yeah. Sure, I knew it. <laughs> Where do you attend your gas pumps, Dorothy? The Gilmore Serve Yourself service station, Beverly oh, Boulevard. I see. Thought that's what you, you were there for. To, what do you mean, to serve yourself? You just serve yourself. You come in and serve your own gas and wipe your own windshield and check your own oil, and then you pay me. <laughs> if I'm going to do all that, I'll put the money in my own pocket and leave. Huh? <laughs> you call that a service station? Mm-hmm. Suppose a woman drives into your station... Do you make her do all that work? I treat the men and women alike. Well, if you ever expect to get married, you're going to have to revise that policy. <laughs> not, not much, Dorothy, but some, huh? 
What do you girls call yourselves? I'm sure you don't refer to each other as girl uh, gas uh, station attendants, do you? No, we call each other gas jockeys. <laughs> There's a whole new language sprung up. <laughs> I'm completely out of touch with the outside world. <laughs> do you save hot rod drivers? Oh, we certainly do. Well, uh, will you save me one the next time I come in there? <laughs> Now, how much gas does the average hot rod driver buy? Well, it all depends how much money they have in their pockets. We had one come in today that bought three cents worth. <laughs> well, can he get out of the station with three cents worth? <laughs> what do you do, drop it in his ear? <laughs> John, how far can you get on three cents worth of gas? Well, I've never been that cheap on it. At least I... <laughs> Well, I've let's assume that you were broke, not necessarily cheap. Let's say you were broke and only had three cents. How far would you go in your car? Well, I bought five cents worth and I got... <laughs> but uh, you wouldn't be so cheap to buy three cents <laughs> Four cents worth. <laughs> Nothing under a nickel, huh? <laughs> okay, how far do you get on a nickel's worth of gas? Oh, well, I almost got home. <laughs> you mean all the way to Oklahoma? <laughs> now, uh, how fast can one of your hot rods uh, travel, uh, Don? <clears throat> well, if you push it, it should go between... <laughs> I mean, if you're inside the car. <laughs> this is where the nickel's worth of gas, I guess. No, when I mean push it, I mean you got your foot in the carburetor. Everything you say has another meaning. <laughs> How fast did you say you could go? Well, most of them are... I won't say if they push it. Most of them... You can say it again if you want. <laughs> I'm, I'm inured to everything now. If you push it, um, they go from between 120 to 160. Mm-hmm. Well, where do you drive 150 miles an hour? And where are you going? <laughs> and what's your hurry? Well, we're uh, racing against the clock at Lake El Mirage. Does the clock run alongside of you? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, we're racing against time. That time. Well, He's kind of <laughs> cute at that. Isn't he? <laughs> Dorothy, do you like him? Sure, I do. <laughs> Very much. Well, I like him too, Dorothy. <laughs> Don, you'll have to choose between us. <laughs> I'm not going to do very well, I can tell you. <laughs> Dorothy, I think you'd be perfectly safe going on a ride with Don here. After all, at 150 miles an hour, he has to keep both hands on the steering wheel. <laughs> Isn't that right, Dad? Uh, no, not necessarily. <laughs> well, if the girl you take out isn't an angel, she will be by the time you get back. <laughs> when you see me crossing the street, all I ask is just stop and wait for about 20 minutes, huh? <laughs> Until I'm safely on the other side. <laughs> how, how carefully do you drive, Don? Well, most of the, the guys that drive roadsters are, 90% of them are very careful. They take pride in their cars, and they drive them safe, and mechanically, they are A1. We are now trying to get them off the streets from racing by driving it, having the races up at El Mirage, and they're racing against time only, and the cars are in perfect condition, and uh, that's about it. Well, my advice for you is to take your car into your nearest DeSoto Plymouth dealer. As a matter of fact, I think during the last war, it was proven that many of the best airplane pilots were kids who had been driving hot rods. Well, <laughs> only let me know when you're coming down my street, will you? <laughs> now that we've discussed the hot rod situation, let's see how well you two make out in the quiz. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $1,500 question.
The best in service at a fair price. That's what the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America offer you when you take your car to any of them for service, no matter what make of car you drive. These DeSoto Plymouth dealers believe in giving every customer a fair deal. This fair deal consists of expert mechanics working with the best tools and equipment to give you an efficient job every time. Also, a desire on the part of every dealer to treat you courteously and to charge you a fair price. It's easy to see. A DeSoto Plymouth dealer wants you for a steady and satisfied customer. So next time your car needs attention, won't you stop in at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer? And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Now, let's see if you two will get a chance at the $1,500. Phantom and tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected songs by Rogers and Hart as your category, right? Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you try? Ten. Now, what is the title of this song? Play, Jerry. What is it? Blue Moon, Blue Moon is right. And they're on their way with $30. All right, how much of the 30 will you bet? Fifteen. $15. What is the title of this one? Have $45. All right, you got $45. Here's your third question. How much of the $45? $40. $40. Give me the title of this one. Okay, Jerry. This can't be love. This can't be love. correct. They're really climbing now. They have $85. All right, you're right back in that hot rod now. Is your last chance to beat the other couples? How much of the $85? $70. $70. $70. Let's see if you can identify this song. And then my heart stood still. My heart stood still is right. And they wind up with a grand total of $155. <laughs> Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Stick around now. You may get the chance at the big question. Roger, the secret word is still bread. I know that, George. Well, perhaps the next couple will say it. I know that, too. We invited some tax assessors to the show and I just... I didn't know that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected one of them, Mrs. Helen Carr. Her partner, Mr. Bill Redding, is a married man from the audience. And here they come, folks. Meet Groucho Mark. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. And if you say the secret word, you'll split $100 in cash. It's a common word, something you see every day. A tax assessor, eh? Uh, that's you, Mr. Redding? No. No, I'm a hotel clerk. <laughs> I thought you said you were a tax assessor. No, you just said that. And uh, you're a tax assessor, Mrs. Uh, Helen Carr? Yes, I am. How long have you two been married? Oh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not married to him. No. Well, don't come running to me with your trouble. <laughs> Aren't you ashamed, Mr. Reddick? Breaking up a happy home like hers? No, I just met her a few months ago. Fast worker, eh? <laughs> Where are you from, you rascal, you? Mr. Well, Reddy, where are you from? Well, I'm from uh, College View or Peanut Hill, Nebraska. That's a suburb just outside of Lincoln. I didn't know Lincoln had any suburbs. <laughs> and where, where are you from, Mrs. Carr? Originally Boone, Iowa. Boone, is that named after Daniel Boone? Uh, Boone yes, or? it is. Named after Daniel Boone. Yeah. Do you know what he was famous for? Well, no, I don't. He had a coonskin cap. <laughs> There's a man spent his whole life as a hero, and he wound up being identified <laughs> as a fellow who wore a coonskin cap. Huh? 
When I die, I'll be known as an old mustache, I suppose. <laughs> How long have you been married, uh, Mr. Reddick? Oh, about uh, 31 or 32 years. Mm -hmm. How did you meet this poor misled wife of yours? <laughs> Well, I was, at the time, I was a night clerk, and I used to, uh, I had an Excelsior motorcycle. This particular morning, while I was rushing home, and just as I scooted around the corner, why, she was stooping over to set down a pail of garbage. It's a very romantic meeting, so... uh, I landed up, uh, mixed up with the garbage and with, uh, with an injured knee... And it took me about two weeks before I was able to ride the motorcycle again. And uh, during that intermission, why, she used to come around and sit on my on the front porch. And... That's known as a Freudian slip. I used to know a girl who wore one of those. Huh? Now, Mrs. Carr, isn't it unusual for a woman to be a tax assessor? Oh, no. Six out of seven of us are women. What is the other one, a giraffe? <laughs> now, as a, a tax uh, deputy, what are your duties? I uh, go around the county door to door taking statements for personal property. Just what is personal property? Huh? Personal property is anything you own or use. <laughs> That's the broadest statement I ever heard. <laughs> you mean I have to pay a tax on my neighbor's shower? <laughs> Well, I use it all the time. <laughs> now, Mrs. Carr, pretend I'm a housewife and you're making a routine call. Now, go ahead, ask me the usual questions. So, good morning. Uh, I want to take your statement. Do you have any real estate? I have a 50-foot lot. Continue. Uh, how, how deep is it? It's about 30 feet deep. Uh, <laughs> that's only at high tide. Go on. <laughs> Personal property? Furniture, yeah. All the furniture, furniture in my living room is new. We got it, it by is... sending in soap coupons. Well, what do you have in the other rooms? I have three million bars of soap. Huh? <laughs> well, I came clean that time. Huh? <laughs> well, now that I know all about tax assessments, let's see how well you two are going to make out with your bet your life. Now, you run your $20 into more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the $1,500 DeSoto Plymouth question. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but Fenneman is off stage to remind our listeners. The hot rod driver and the girl gas attendant earned $155. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected pictures on paper money as your category. Is that right? That's correct. Now here's your first question. How much of the 20 would you try? $10. $10. Whose picture is on the $5 bill? That's, um... Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln, you knew that from Lincoln, Nebraska. They're off to a good start with $30. Well, you, well, you got $30. Remember, you're going for $1,500 tonight. Now, how much of the 30 will you bet? You'll bet the whole 30. The whole 30. Whose picture is on the $20 bill? Uh, that's Sandra Jackson. Andrew Jackson is right. <laughs> Now they have sixty dollars. Well, you're really gamblers. Now you got sixty dollars. Hey, here's your third question. How much of the sixty? You bet the sixty. You're gonna bet the sixty. <laughs> Whose picture is on the ten dollar bill? Um, that's uh, Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> They're really climbing now, Groucho. They have one hundred and twenty dollars. Got a hundred and twenty dollars. How much of the hundred and twenty you gonna pay? You gonna bet? <laughs> one hundred and twenty. You're going to bet the whole yeah, works, huh? <laughs> Whose picture is on the one dollar bill? George Washington. George Washington. <laughs> and they wind up with a grand total of two hundred and forty dollars. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And I will soon know who gets the chance at the fifteen hundred dollar question. You know, friends, when you're out driving in a long automobile trip, keep in mind that there are more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. Fenneman, don't you know when a person's driving a car, he's supposed to keep his mind on the road? Well then, folks, when you're at home, thinking about that trip in your car, remember there's a DeSoto Plymouth dealer near you. I can practically feel his hot breath on my spare tire. <laughs> That's just the warmer weather ahead, Groucho. And it's just one more reason why you should drive in to a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Touche, Fenneman. Now, let's get back to your bet your life. Who's ahead? 
Well, the tax assessor and the married man are leading with $240. And the secret word is still bread. We invited some game wardens and some commercial fishermen to the program tonight. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Warden Walter Shannon and fisherman Vince Devlahovich. And here they are. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, boys, to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100 in cash between you. It's a common word, something you see every day. A commercial fisherman and a game warden, eh? What is your name? Uh... Devlahovich. Devlahovich, huh? What is that? What is that, Russian? No, that's uh, Yugoslavonia. Yugoslavonia, huh? Are, are you from uh, Yugoslavia? I was born here, born. San Pedro. Are you a skipper or a member of the crew? I'm a skipper. A skipper, huh? Could you skip around for me here? <laughs> Did you ever wear a Schiaparelli uh, gown or a no. hat or anything? <laughs> you think they'd pay to come in, wouldn't you? <laughs> you're, the, you're the game warden, uh, Mr. Shannon? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me, warden, this sounds like old times. Can we call you... <laughs> Gordon, uh, what are your principal duties? Our principal duties are to watch people uh, who are hunting and fishing. Oh, a television fan, eh? <laughs> or as we say in the business, uh, TV. <laughs> that means terrible vaudeville, huh? <laughs> ah, there are still diehards that listen to radio, huh? <laughs> Why do you watch people fishing and hunting? Uh, haven't you got anything better to do, Mr. Shannon? Uh, to see uh, if they uh, violate the fish and game laws. Well, can't they violate it if you, without you watching them? <laughs> what kind of laws do they vi violate? They uh, uh, catch and hunt uh, out of season, catch fish out of season, uh, sometimes shoot uh, females. Uh, <laughs> What kind of females? Huh? Such as does, uh, deer. Does females, you mean? <laughs> what do you mean by does females? Uh, and the deer, uh, does, uh, females. <laughs> what about dem females? Huh? Or dumb females? That's even more accurate. Huh? Now, warden, wh what gives you the most trouble on your job? Uh. As a rule, people uh, hunting and fishing out of season. Mm -hmm. Now, when is the deer season? In the southern part of the state here, it runs uh, from about August 7th to October 15th. Well, how can the deer tell when it's open season? <laughs> well, uh, I suppose by uh, the bullets whizzing by. I guess that's true, huh? <laughs> and they know for sure when they see the hunters dropping like flies, too. <laughs> Now, mackerel bait, around here, <laughs> where is the best place to catch sardines? In the ocean. <laughs> no, I, I, what I meant was, in what part of the ocean do you catch sardines? Well, offshore of San Diego up to uh, Santa Barbara uh, City. What kind of fish do you catch? Uh, mostly sardines and tuna. Now, how much do you get for your tuna? Well, uh, yeah, the elephant tuna, you get $310 a ton. When we get a load of tuna, which is 90 ton, we uh, split uh, the money. The crew gets 65% of the share, and the boat gets 35%. The boat walks up and asks for it? <laughs> Anything unusual ever happen to you when you're off on one of these fishing trips? Well, yes. Uh, a couple of months ago, uh, we were uh, pinched by the game warden in, uh, for... <laughs> well, why did he pinch you? Well, we were supposed to be fishing in Santa Monica Bay, but... Uh... <laughs> what happened? Well, we paid a fine. Each crew made 
Each crew member paid a $25 paid the fine. And, and the boat pays part of it, too? Yes. The boat walks right down to the police station? That's a very intelligent boat, you know that. I don't know what you need a crew for at all. Well, I know all about fishing and hunting. Now, let's see how well you two make out in the battle for the $1,500 question. You beat the other two couples and you win the chance at all that money. I can't tell you how much our first couples won, but Fenneman's going to remind our listeners. The tax assessor and the married man are ahead with $240. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build you $20. You selected national parks as your category. Is that right? All right. Now talk right up into the microphone. How much of the $20 are you going to try? Ten. Ten dollars. $10. In what state is Hot Springs National Park? Arkansas. Arkansas is right. <laughs> All right, Rocco, with $30. All right, Remy, going for $1,500 tonight. How much of the 30 will you try? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. In what state is the Everglades National Park? Florida. Florida is correct. <laughs> now they have $55. $55. Here's your third question. How much of the 55 50 50 In what state is Zion National Park? Utah. Utah is right. <laughs> now they have $105. Now you got $105. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 105 100 it's okay with me. 100. Okay. In what state is Mammoth Caves National Park? Kentucky. Kentucky is right. And they wind up with a grand total of $205. And that means the tax assessor and the married man with $240 get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question. <laughs> Is your car ready for the warmer weather? If not, why not stop in now at a DeSoto Plymouth dealer's? To put your car in tip-top condition, your DeSoto Plymouth dealer will give it an engine tune-up. This should be done to prepare your car for the warmer weather ahead. So be sure to stop in at the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer first chance you get. No matter which of the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers you visit for that check tune-up, you can be sure of getting efficient, courteous service at a fair price wherever you see the sign of an authorized DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here is the tax assessor and the married man, a winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,500 question, Groucho. Here we go for $1,500. You ready? Yes, sir. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully and please no help from the audience. Here it is. The Pony Express took nine days to travel from St. Joseph, Missouri, to the Western Terminal. For $1,500, what was the western end of the Pony Express run? What is the answer you two have decided upon? Salt Lake. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. It's uh, Sacramento, California. So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,000. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $240 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production, transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life, presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth, two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget, next week, the big question will be worth... $2,000. Well, Bing Crosby's champing at the bit, so good night, folks, and remember, just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Folks, well, here's a tip from the National Safety Council. Two of the most important rules of the road are courtesy and common sense. This is George Fenneman, signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast.